Well, I'm so bored today. I thought I'd treat us all to a little story from my Ladybird Books for Adults. What shall we have? Um, hmm. Midlife Crisis. It's got me written all over that. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. What have we got? When we are young, we all dream of doing something wonderful and exciting with our lives. What will it be? A cosmonaut? An underwater detective? A Tommy Gunner? A groin surgeon? Anything is possible. And then one day it isn't. Jason's midlife crisis started one Sunday morning at B&Q when he spotted a tub of varnish. I will never own a boat, he thought to himself. Jason has never wanted to own a boat, but now not owning one is all he can think about. Gwen has a 2.1 in ancient history. She always planned to write a series of novels about Bodicea. Gwen is covered in applesauce and has spent the afternoon clapping. Bless Gwen, eh? Jeff did not think of himself as having a midlife crisis until he realised that people started university this year were born when he was 25. Jeff has come to the Arctic Circle to hunt and kill a whale. Ah. Look at Jeff's lovely art. Mid-lifers like to count how fast time is passing because it helps them panic. It's incredible, says Vivian. The gap between now and the first Beastie Boys album is roughly the same as the gap between that album and Elvis's first LP. Help me, please, says Vivian. Someone make it stop. I think Vivian's uh, struggling a bit there. Joe's body used to agree with him. It used to agree that his shirt fitted, that he could manage another pint, and that he could be awake when the train reached his station, and that he had actually finished weeing. Now Joe's body disagrees with all of these things. I'd put that hammer down if I were you, Joe. Philip has a recurring dream where he's an overstuffed dummy on a blazing bonfire. Children point and laugh at him. Look at him, they say. He's fat and hopeless. Burn him. That's all he's good for. At least he can keep us warm. Philip does not burn. He cannot even do that properly. Ooh, look. It's like a conspiracy theorist to me. After his divorce, Nick sold his sensible car and bought a coupe. In 10 years time, Nick will look back at the pictures of himself and the lady and realise he looked at an astonishing knob. Yeah, well, I don't know. Nothing wrong with an astonishing knob, if you ask me. In a war, people do not have midlife crisis. They are much too grateful to be alive. At this airfield, midlifers can have a wartime fantasy day. They can fly a spitfire and even do a loop-de-loop. -loop. For an extra fee, they can be shot down by an authentic Luftwaffe aircraft and killed. Many people find this helps. <laughs> oh dear. <coughs> Philip does not regret leaving his wife, growing his hair and starting to wear cowboy boots. If he had not done that, he would not have met Megan. As long as Philip avoids making cultural references before 1990, never reveals he has a blue yonder email and cries and tries not to have a heart attack, he and Megan have a great future. <laughs> Mm. 
Growing up brings responsibility. For example, having a family to support can be very expensive. Fortunately, by midlife, most people find they are earning a little more than they did when they were younger, which can also be spent on bigger versions of all the toys they wanted when they were six. Kathy's youngest has left home last year. Kathy has more time for herself now to see old friends. A friend came round with some old school photographs. I was beautiful, thought Kathy to herself when she saw the pictures. Nobody said. <laughs> Kathy has started to have an affair with the man at the cooker showroom. Oh, bless your meat. At the grand. Frank is 41. He has been to a record shop. He has rebought all the music he liked when he was young, but on the most inconvenient possible format. He also asked the 22 year old by the counter what new records were good. He bought everything she recommended because she had amazing hair. <laughs> he hates all the new records, but not as much as he hates himself. <laughs> <clears throat> Paul recently bought a shark tooth necklace. Ray has spent the morning bidding on a leather biker jacket. Last night, Charlie googled local triathlon triathlons. They are now talking about quitting their family holidays short next year and going to Glastonbury together. We could lie and say it's a conference, says <laughs> Ray. Sally has tried lots of things to make herself feel younger. Running, glamping, pilates, adult colouring books <laughs> and mummy makeover. Bikram planking, platonic, platonic irrigation and having an inappropriate relationship with a rangy 20-something inter Zeb who has three, be three beards. <laughs> Three beards and a Lego earring. Sally has given up and is now thinking of joining the National Trust. <laughs> it's the court, Sally. It's just not right. She should have become a flasher. <laughs> Duncan bought a second-hand bicycle using money he got for his 38th birthday. Three years later, Duncan is competing in the Tour de France on a bag that costs more than his deposit for his flat. Duncan has forgotten what he's trying to prove. <laughs> Doing well, Duncan. I can't do that when I was 12. Tom is fed up. The band he was in at college played a reunion show at the football club bar last week and they were rubbish. The evening cost him 140 in drinks, taxis and babysitter. Tom has now put his Les Paul copy guitar on eBay. Jerry is explaining he wishes, his wishes to his barber. Jerry's cut involves layers, dyes and four separate thickening products, but it is worth it. In the end, Jerry will have a full head of hair if viewed face on and not from behind or above. Or out of direct sunlight and away from high winds. God loves a trier. Mark's partner, Trina, has just called to say the PTA meeting is running late. Eat without me, she said. Mark rings off quickly. He feels guilty. Even though Trina cannot possibly know he spent the last three hours on Facebook looking for photos of girls he was at school with. Susie's at the hairdresser's. She wants to look good because tonight she is going to a gabber all night <laughs> under a railway arch with her estranged daughter. <laughs> what? <laughs> Diet blue, please. Oh, how very dare you. <laughs> Diet blue, please, says Susie. Susie is wondering which brow will best show off, show off a new tattoo. <laughs> On the way back from the lads' weekend, Jim will be cautioned at 
Capal Airport for possession of marijuana. The two police officers will be half his age. It will be the first marijuana Jim has possessed in two decades. Oh, bad luck, mate. Amanda is 40 and childless. Oh, she spends most of her evenings at bars and clubs meeting people who are 10 years younger than her and applying lots of forgiving filters to photos of herself to post on Instagram. Instagram. Soon she will buy a cat. Hey. No, I'm wrong with cats. Brendan is exhausted. Today he's run four miles in his new vintage Dunlop Green Flash trainers. Cycled ten miles, done a Zumba class, flirted with his PA and spent the evening looking up various aches and lumps on the internet in case they are really signs of cancer or diabetes. He will sleep till 3am when he would be woken by anxiety dreams about a 23-year-old graduate who could do almost everything he does for half the money. Oh, Start drinking. It'll numb it. <laughs> Colin spent his redundancy money on the loudest motorcycle he could find. It has stopped at a petrol station on the way to an archive where he is researching his family tree. You only live once, Colin says with a wink to the girl on the moped. The girl smiles back at him. Colin reminds her of, him, <laughs> of her dad. And there we go. You're welcome. I love you. Bye.